Hello, everyone. Welcome back to csigmathtutor.com. Today, we are continuing our coordinate geometry, and we're talking about the midpoint of a line, the length of a line, and the gradient of a line given two points on the line. So our aim today, our basic objectives are to find what the gradient of a line is, the midpoint of a line is, and the length of a line segment given any two points that define that line or are on that line. We're going to start off first by looking at the midpoint of the line segment. So if we're asked to find the midpoint of a line segment, this should be midpoint. So let's ignore that, midpoint of a line segment. The midpoint of a line segment is found by adding the x numbers, adding the y numbers, and dividing by 2. So we are going to add our x numbers. Our x numbers are 3 and 7. It helps to label them, so let's label them. x1, y1, x2, y2. You could label them in the reverse order. This being x1, that being y1. This being x2, that be y2. So we're going to let's sketch a line here. Let's say this is our line. This is A and this is B. Now the coordinates of A are 3, 5 and the coordinates of B are 7, 1. And we want to find a point that lands right in the middle, that x. So what will be the x, y? What will be the coordinates of that point? So once we label our points, we can easily fit them into the formula and find our result. The formula says x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. Putting that in English, we mean at the x numbers, which are 3 plus 7 divided by 2, add the y numbers, which are 5 and 1, and divide by 2. Here we get 10 over 2 and 6 over 2. Dividing that out gives us 5, comma 3. So these are the coordinates for the point. So the x here would have the coordinates 5, 3. And that would be the midpoint of your line. Applying the same thing to this example here, we label the points first, x1, y1, x2, y2. And substitute those values into the formula. So we're going to add our x's. Our x's are 3 plus negative 1. And our y values are 1 plus 3, we divide both of those by 2. 3 plus negative 1 is 2 over 2. 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 over 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this would be the midpoint of this line that passes through A and B. Going on to our next example, we're looking at the length. Now, the length of the line segment is found using a variation of um, Pythagoras' theorem. And what we need to do is simply to identify what the, the, the points are and substitute the information in the formula. These questions tend to be simple. They're formula-based, so they're, anybody can learn them, and you can learn them quite quickly and, and master them quite quickly. So we're going to find the length of AB. This is our A. This is our B. So we're going to substitute. First, we want to label the points so that we don't mix them up. Um, so this here is x1, then y1, and x2, and y2. Once we have labeled them, we can put them in our formula. y2 is 4, so we have 4, take away 0, square, plus 0, take away negative 2, square, that's for the x's, that gives us now 4 square plus 2 square, which gives us a square root of 16 plus 4, which gives us a square root of 20. And you can put that in your calculator and write it to a specific number of units, whatever they ask, the, the question would ask you to do, whatever number of decimal places you want. This here is the length of the line segment that AB and now we can try it. This, try the same thing with this example here. We are given 
P, Q and R, and ask to find the length of PR. Here is our P, and here is our R. P is the point this, Q is the point this, and R is the point that. So let's, this is our R, this is our P. So this becomes X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. Plugging them into the formula, we have y2, which is 3, take away y1, which is 2, square, plus x2, x2, which is 1, take away 4, square. All right, now that we have that, we can proceed with it. So 3, take away 2, square, and 1, take away 4, square for the x's. 3 take away 2 is 1, so you have 1 square plus negative 3 square, which gives us the square root of 1 plus 9, which gives us the root of 10. And again, you can put this in your calculator and write it to the specific number of decimal places as given. I'm writing the word units behind it because when you measure, as we are measuring the length of the line, it has to be in some unit, whether that unit is centimeter or kilometer or meter. So writing the word units behind it is just a general way to say that you're measuring something. So the answer is in some units. Now that we have looked at length, we can go on to look at the gradient given two points. Now remember we said gradient is the slope or the steepness of a line. Uh, we also describe it as the rise over run, or we describe it as the change in y over the change in x. This is a formula we use when we have two points on the line, y2 take away y1 divided by x2 take away x1. So this gives us the change in y, that gives us the change in x. Here's our two points, h and g, and we want the gradient for h, g. So let's label x1, y1, same procedure x2, y2, and now we're just going to apply that information to the formula. So we have y2 take away y1 divided by x2 take away x1, which gives us y2, 3, take away 6, divided by 5, take away negative 4. 3 take away 6 is negative 3, and 5 take away negative 4 is 9. This simplifies further down to negative 1 over 3. And that is the gradient for this line. In this question, our coordinates are 3, 1 and negative 1, 3. So we can label them as x1, y1, x2, and y2. Again, we're going to proceed by writing them in the formula. y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. I find that when you're using a formula and you write it each time while you are using it in a question that it actually strengthens the memory of the formula in your mind. So it's useful to write down the formula each time you use it so, and that habit of writing it down helps you to remember it more. So let's take our y2, y2 is 3, take away our y1 over x2 which is also 3, which is negative 1, sorry take away 3. So we want to be consistent here. So 3, take away 1, as y2, take away y1, and x2, negative 1, take away 3. This gives us 3 minus 2, 3 minus 1, which is 2, over negative 1, minus 3, which is negative 4, and that gives us a negative a half. And that there is our gradient for this question. So it's very, very useful to find the gradient um, given two points. Pretty simple procedure. You label your points and you substitute the values into the formula and you do the calculations. And that's pretty much it. Here in this question, we are asked to find the gradient of the line segment AB. All right, so what is the gradient of this? I'm going to first use the formula since we have the two points. A is negative 1, 9, and B is 3, 1. I'm going to label them as x1, y1, and x2, y2. 
Notice our formula will say y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1. Now let's substitute this information into the formula. So 1 take away 9 over 3 take away negative 1, which gives us negative 8 over 4, which is actually negative 2. So this is our gradient. Now, if we didn't want to use the formula and you wanted to use the rise over run idea to find your answer, then we can look at it by looking at this triangle here that is already drawn and ask ourselves, what is our rise? What is our run? And do the division, rise over run. Now, our rise is on this side. It's on the y-axis. We are rising from 0 to 7. As you can see here, rising from 0 to 7. So our rise is 7. And our run, we are running from 0 to 3 and a half. So our run is 3 and a half. So you put in your 7, 7 divided by 3.5, which gives you 2. So then the question is, why do we have two different answers? Why is one negative 2 and why is one positive 2? Please remember that when a line slopes in this direction from left to right, it has a negative gradient. You must remember this. When you use this rise of a run idea, you will not get a negative number. It mostly will calculate to give you a positive answer. But you need to remember that running from this direction, sloping from, from left to right, then you have a negative gradient. So there's no contradiction, it's just that we weren't finished here. So we adjust our answer to put negative two because of the direction of the slope. So using the formula or using the rise over run, we end up with our gradient, which is negative two. Let's take another question. This here was our final question. We're going to be looking at how to find the gradient for this line segment. The idea is the same. In the previous question, we had our triangle. No, we don't. So what we're going to do is to put our triangle on this line here. Let me use a brighter color so that you can see it properly. So we draw a right angle triangle. It must be a right angle triangle because you need a height and a base or a rise and a run. So this is the triangle that we have that we're going to be using. Um, the question told us that A is 3, 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We want to write those in. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So A was 6, 7, and B is 3, 2. If we use the formula, A being 6, 7 and b is 3 2 then we can label our points as x1 y1 x2 y2 and substitute into the formula y2 take away y1 over x2 take away x1 this will give us 2 take away 7 over 3 take away six. So two take away seven, y two take away y one, three take away six. And this gives us negative five over negative three. And that answer there is positive five over three. If you didn't want to use that and you wanted to use the idea of the rise and the run, then this side is your rise. This side is your run. And you would have seen that the, 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 the triangle rise is one, two, three, four, five boxes. Each centimeter is one unit. So the, the rise is five and the run is three. So rise over run gives us five over three. And that is our answer. <clears throat> so both this time, both have the same answer because the graph, this line slopes in the opposite direction of 
right to left, which means that it has a positive gradient. So there's no discrepancy in the methods that we chose with the answers. I hope you found this video useful. If you did and you're a student who is doing math at CSEC, then feel free to subscribe for more videos and thanks for watching.